Hey yeah, guys, thanks, stopping by. Uh, it's a rainy weekend, so we're doing a couple of projects that are going to keep us in the shed for a good part of the day. One of the things we're going to have a look at today is the Flexi Tank 55 litre diesel bladder uh, that you can see here. Now I picked this up second hand for about 150 bucks. They do retail for around about the eight nine hundred dollar mark, give or take. They've stopped making these about two years ago. Uh, this was made in around about 2016, so it was probably one of the last ones made. Give you a bit of a rundown, show you what it looks like, and show you how solidly made this is. And we're going to duck down the servo. We'll fill her up. And uh, we'll see how well that goes. Uh, this will be our maiden voyage. I'm heading away next weekend and I'm heading out west where I'm going to need to carry some additional fuel. Just an emergency case situation or to give me the ability to skip a dodgy fuel station and get to one where I'm happy to fill up um, or if I just need some additional range. We'll cover it off. We'll give you a quick look at it. We'll duck down to the fuel station. We'll fill her up and then we're going to decant it into the car uh, using all the additional bits that we've got here. Stick with me and we'll give you a look at it. I picked this up second hand. These do retail for around about anywhere I've seen between seven and nine hundred dollars, uh, and I managed to pick this one up for one hundred and fifty bucks uh, second hand, used twice. A widthwise, uh, let's call it four hundred. So four hundred mil widthwise, lengthwise, we are around about I'd say fourteen hundred there. All around the circumference of the tank, uh, there are these tie down points. At both ends, here, uh, here, and this is just where the uh, previous owner has had it hung up from the roof. This is the input hose, so this is where we're going to be filling from. Now, the previous owner has instructed me that these can take quite some time to fill uh, because the air is going to want to escape out of the filler, so we'll be filling that nice and slow. I would normally use the high flow option when I go into a service station, but we won't be doing that today. We'll be swinging around to the other tank and uh, using the standard flow option just to make sure that doesn't overflow. This is the output, so this is where we'll be connecting up uh, to take the fuel out when we want to drain the tank uh, and put it straight into the car. And this is meant to be an air valve uh, for a pressure valve, so uh, I'm a little bit curious about this uh, because I haven't filled it up yet. I'm unsure how this is going to go. Now if this is not working well and is not sealed, uh, then I can see this leaking, so Gonna have to keep a really close eye on this while I'm filling. This was sitting in a hot car and the diesel expanded or something like that uh, and it needed to uh, release a little bit of pressure. So I think that'll come in handy there, but I don't think that's gonna come in handy at all uh, from a pressure filling perspective. But you can see uh, any stitching, any welding is very heavy duty. And you can see how many times it's doubled up and how many layers there are and just how heavy duty this thing is. Now as far as these fillers go, these are like a cam lock. Um, so there is some pressure put onto this cap here uh, which should stop the leaking. You can see these locks inside there. Hopefully when you put that on that makes it nice and tight. That's where you would fill it. The owner has created this extension piece here uh, which is basically you know uh, just a I guess a 45 degree bend in PVC. So that is going to attach there and we would lock that on. And as you can see there, that gives you a better angle uh, to fill the tank itself. Uh, that's going to give us less concern for any overflow coming straight out of here and staying in the car. And I could possibly even extend that a little bit further if I wanted to. Uh, but I want to be a little bit closer to this clear piece of pipe uh, so I can see if I'm starting to overfill this and it's starting to come out. And this tap is at the other end of that. My main concern was that if I got past this section here, um, you know, it started to come back up this pipe, I've overflowed it, then I need to somehow extract diesel from it before I can seal it off, but that's not the case. We've got this tap up here, so we can fill up to this point here, um, if it starts to fill up into this clear tube here, and we know we can just turn that tap off and then everything's going to be sealed in there. The previous owner did say this was filled uh, as a two-person job, and that obviously made things a little bit easier. Uh, I will be doing this on my own today, so you're going to get to come along for the journey. So this will be the first time I've actually filled this, uh, so it should be interesting. This is where we will be uh, taking the fuel from. So again, just these little cam locks. This is going to be our hose that we'll be using to fill the car. It's going to clip on there and tighten her up. Gives us a nice good seal, so we shouldn't have any leaks there. You're going to see this is a little inline pump. Uh, so I'm not sure what sort of volume this pumps out, but we're going to find out soon enough. Attached to that is a decent length piece of power cable. There's an inline switch which doesn't work, so we're going to need to take that off. We're going to take out 
this inline switch and then just put that Anderson plug straight back on there like that. Right, so we'll get rid of that switch altogether. And then I'm going to use my remote control Anderson box, uh, which I'll show you later on when we're filling up. And we're going to use that so I'll have remote control. It'll be outside the car and I won't have to worry about trying to run to turn this on and off. And on the other end of that is another one of these cam locks. So that one is going to go one of these jobbies. Uh, so this looks just like the one you're going to be using at the service station to fill up. One pops into there. And then we obviously just tighten those down as we did with everything else. Now this little pump uh, is submersible. Uh, so if somebody else had a jerry can or the like or something like that and an Anderson plug, we could plug that into their vehicle, disconnect that from the hose there and then we could use this to fill up their vehicle. What we're going to do is go down to the service station. We're going to see how this goes filling it. Uh, and then we will come back home and then we'll get set up once we get back home and we'll see how we go getting fuel out of it. Okay, so here we go. So we've moved everything in the back of the car. This is the bladder fit into just behind the passenger and driver's seat. We're gonna make this quick because we've got water coming straight in here uh, and it is raining. So this is basically where we're gonna be filling it from because we come out this side and there is our fuel tank filler. Uh, so that's gonna make it nice and close. Uh, I can either use the Anderson plug here uh, from the fridge or I can run it around the back and use that one. It's going to be sitting on this flat platform here. I will get this brace down and put something in here that I can tie this down with. Uh, I will have to be very careful uh, that he stays out of the front of the car while I'm back here filling up because he is inclined to come and visit me while I'm filling up fuel. That's just what we do. We hang out while we're putting fuel in the car uh, but I need to make sure that he doesn't jump on that bladder while he's doing that so I might have to pop these up. Uh, to discourage him from doing that. Anyway, let's get down to the service station and check this out. We are at the service station. We're just trying to get this all connected up. Ready to be filled. We'll open that up. Okay, straight away I can tell you it's hard to get this nozzle in and get the right angle. Uh, when I was filling it up, I did notice that the bag would start to inflate uh, like it was almost full, but I'd stop pumping thinking that I was getting close to the top uh, And then a whole bunch of air would just come rushing out now what that did on the first time was Also sprayed out some dudes like me as well not a lot but a little bit So I obviously knew that once the bag started to inflate I had to back off a little bit Let it breathe let some of the air out and then keep pumping Now this has around about 40 litres in it. You can see there from where I did the fill, we only put 40 in. Now the reason I only went 40 was I was starting to see uh, it come up into this section here and it was starting to get very, very slow. Uh, so I think it was a reasonable amount of time. You can see there uh, the footage where I was filling it up. Um, I wasn't doing a lot of talking because there was lots of people around me, didn't want to look like an idiot. Um, but uh, this was filling up reasonably quickly. Uh, but what I did notice was that I had to hold this up like this um, and every now and then the tank would just start to fill up like it was getting full uh, and it was like it was getting an airlock so I would stop pumping fuel and then a whole bunch of air would rush out of this. Uh, so if you've got one of these or you're looking to get one of these you need to be careful because when you do that you get a bit of splash back uh, out of the fuel so consequently my hand ended up covered in diesel. Um, yeah, but that's just technique. This was the first time filling it up, so that's kind of to be expected. I'll know just to take it that little bit slower, I guess, and uh, allow a bit more air out. I might even use this one uh, as like a breather and just open this up and see whether that works. I've been away. We've left it about two hours just to see how it goes. Um, and you can see there's lots of compression still available there, so it's, it's nowhere near full. Uh, but I'm happy to report no other diesel got anywhere. As you can see, while you're doing the fill, that little panel drops down. So if anything spills out, it's going to land on that and run straight out of your vehicle. I did use this section and I can smell the diesel in that. So if I can find somewhere to store that outside of the vehicle, uh, that would be much better. I've intentionally left the vehicle for a few hours just to see if we've got any leaks and just to see what the smell of the fuel's like. Uh, it's not too bad from the front, but I think the majority of it is coming from this fella here because we had that, uh, we used that and then left that in the car. Now we're fighting with the rain at the moment, but while we're sort of waiting for that to pass, I can show you this. So I have my 
remote Anderson box. The remote Anderson box basically works off this remote control here. These are available on eBay for about mm, somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks. I'll stick a link below down to this one and I'll also stick a link below down to the single button ones. Uh, the single button ones are what I'm going to change this out for, for the fixed mount of the air compressor. So I'll put a link for both of those down the bottom. Uh, but what's in this box is just obviously an input Anderson plug and an output Anderson plug. They both go into a 60 amp relay, uh, which is then triggered by one of these little 10 amp relays uh, that comes with this. So originally these do come in a, a separate box, they're in a the little container uh, that you can mount somewhere, but to fit the 60 amp relay and the relays uh, for this, the little board that comes with this, I needed to take it out of its case and uh, pop it in this one box. Basically I can plug this in anywhere I want, in any Anderson plug, and then have it on a remote control. So whether that be lights, uh, the air compressor, or in this case we're going to have this little pump hooked up to it so we can switch this on or off in case of emergency and this will be in my pocket ready to go. We've got the output hose connected up with the inline pump, um, so that's obviously going to be pulling from there and pushing out. This side will be operated via remote control. Here we'll hit the button. There we go. Gonna pop this and see whether we have any flow come out of that hose. Okay, so we do have to rely on suction here. And it's certainly not a quick flow. But that sounds okay. Like remember the old school pumps? I used yeah. to be able to push them and then push the switch. Uh, so this has got that, so I can click that on and then just let that do its thing. Certainly a lot cleaner from a fill perspective than jerry cans and having to hold jerry cans oh, yeah, up and yeah, tip yeah, them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as the time frame goes about pumping the fuel out, it only took about four minutes, uh, probably not even, to decant that 40 litres into the vehicle. It was very, very quick. One thing that I have found was that I wasn't able to get all of the diesel back out uh, like I, I thought I would. I went to put the tank uh, into the shed and realized there was still some fuel in it that it hadn't taken it all out uh, So I took it back out placed it down beside the vehicle, you know tried to situate it So the fuel uh, or the diesel was near the output uh, and I certainly got a few more liters out of it But I'm still not content that I've got all the fuel out of it So I reckon there'd probably be at least another you know four liters or something still inside the bladder not terrible though, um, but still not perfect. So maybe there's a technique there that somebody can share with me uh, how to get all of the fuel out of these. So there are benefits to having two people playing with one of these, but I was happy with the results uh, doing it on my own. So overall, I'm probably about 70% impressed with this, uh, as it is a little bit of a challenge to use. Is it any more difficult to using a couple of jerry cans? Probably not. With this, there's no need to lift it, which is good. Uh, so if you're struggling to lift things, you know, and you struggle to lift jerry cans, this is a really good option uh, in that you can decant direct from the vehicle with that pipe uh, and you don't need to be lifting jerry cans up to uh, empty them out. But overall, pretty impressed with it. Like I said, not super impressed. I don't know whether that's uh, still down to technique. Uh, and I need to improve that. But uh, I'm happy with the purchase for the 150 bucks. If I'd paid 900, probably wouldn't be super happy uh, but again I think I'm gonna get better at using this and uh, you know it'll it'll work better as my technique gets better so I'll definitely take this away with me for the next trip uh, which is coming up in about a week or so uh, and we'll put it through its paces if we need to uh, and then I'll give you an idea whether I'm happy with that over the jerry cans so that's it guys thanks very much for stopping by for this one uh, if you've got any questions uh, that I might be able to help you with uh, feel free to post them below and uh, I'll give it my best shot uh, and if you've got one of these or you've got a, a similar sort of bladder uh, and you've got some tips for me how to empty them, uh, how to fill them, whatever the case may be, uh, post up. I'd be interested to hear from you. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.